Hello. Do you want to learn how to catch more fish, get more time out of the water, and talk fishing? Then you're in the right place, and we're going to start right now. Hey, welcome back, Long Rodders. Um, I'm sorry we're used to somebody's watching. Good. Whoever's watching, uh, why don't you tell me how it looks? Um, we started at nine today. Instead of being at two o'clock, we might switch it to nine. It just that the internet is a little less glitchy, so it's more likely to. Uh, you know what I mean? It's less less likely to uh, be all glitchy and spotty, and so if you're watching, let me know. Is it look good? Huh? See, we're in red. Well, I hope it comes out of red and goes back into green. Anyway, welcome back. Um, I hope this is not it, this nine o'clock works. If it doesn't work and it seems to be glitchy as like it was before, um, then we'll switch it back to two o'clock. I don't know. I'm thinking about getting a new router box. But anyway, let's talk about the things we want to talk about. Let's talk fishing. Um. One thing I want to talk about is your flies. In the water, during the winter months, your flies seem to be, your nymphs t seem to be a lot smaller. So you're going to have to go down into size uh, 18s and 20s and 22s with your your uh, nymphs this time of year. Everything's small, except for your stone flies that sometimes have a two year lifespan or longer. They will stay roughly in the same size so except for that little black stone that you guys see crawling around on the snow I don't know if you ever did but uh, there's a little teeny stone in the size about 18 real long body really skinny we tied that in a class if you haven't seen that at the end of this video go back and check out our other videos to check it out another thing I want to talk about is wintertime nymphing um, there's a big craze now, and I tried it, uh, on urine nymphing. There's one problem with that that I see. Urine nymphing is basically you have no fly line out, and it's all leader material. So you work with real long leaders, and you're basically gone to the end of your rod. Here's the problem I have with that. It works, and you can feel what you're doing is when you're in your nipping, you're keeping your rod stick high and basically kind of following the fly, not pulling the fly along, but following the fly ahead of the fly with your rod tip. And if you tr go out and try it, I recommend you try it because I did, you can feel everything that that fly does. If it hits a rock or stops or hits a twig, you can feel it in the end of your rod. So it's really a fun way to do it. And if you have an option, like if you're in rough water, and the creek's not that wide and you know there's fish in there and it's a great way to catch fish very productive but the problem is you have to be within the end of your rod tip to them fish so you have to be really up close to the fish and a lot of the fishing we do you can't get that close to the fish especially in this time of year when the water's real low and really super clear so 
I, you know, that's my problem with urine nymphy. But I recommend you try it. And uh, it's really effective. And it's, you really can fill your flies for any... See, what happens is the fish are lazy in the summer. And they're not very active because their metabolism... They're cold-blooded. Makes their metabolism, metabolism slow way, way down. Uh, so that makes them not very active. They're not going to go out of their way and swim across the creek like you see them chasing dry flies in the summer or your you can sometimes see them do that to your nymphs in the summer. They're not going to do that. So you're going to have to get the fly in. So you're going to have to be more patient and nymph run your nymphs over an area uh, a lot more so that you can make sure and getting that depth right. You know, you don't want to be ticking bottom but all the time but you want to be pretty dang close to that unless you think the fish are holding in a, in a middle area sometimes we have warm days the midges hatch which we discovered that in videos we got a cool dry fly midge uh, so make sure to check them out but the midges if they're hatching you know you might be fishing mid column if they're taking the, the nymphs as they're going to the surface What I do, I recommend there is an unweighted nymph, fish right below the surface, then a an merger, and then a dry. I need to have all of those stages of the nymph covered as they were hatching. So if they're taking the mergers, you'd have that. If they're taking the nymph right below the surface, you got that. And I always use a strike indicator. I might bring you, uh, I think I'm going to bring you um, videos in the future of making different strike indicators. Like one I'm trying to learn myself is uh, material. I usually use like uh, a screw. You put your line through it and you screw the top down and you can move it up and down, screw it down because it doesn't kink the leader. I don't like them strike indicators that kink the leader. But we'll bring you like, a, I want to learn how to do a yarn strike indicator for winter fishing because they're a little more sensitive. And a little more smaller and do them in brown so they don't spook the fish or you could do i do a lot of in the summer as i'm going to bring you uh i'll soon be doing one is an atom in like a size 18 or uh, a parachute atom would be really good in a size 18 or 20 and then just drop your nymphs off of them because the nymphs the little midges size 22s it just doesn't uh I don't know how, it just, they don't sink your little teeny dries. See, if you're tank, taking like one of our flashbacks in the size 14 with a bead head on it, it's that midge dry is not going to hold up your nymphs. But if you're using unweighted little midges and maybe just using a number six uh, lead weight, it's not going to sink the dry. And if you put the dry on, then you're merger which would be related below the surface I like to fish when I fish in mergers if you noticed I put the wing post up that's the only thing I hit with dry flight uh, stuff I leave the rest underneath the surface so just that wing is sticking up out of the water so then you have a dry your merger and then the nymph would probably be 12 inches off of that and probably float probably about six inches below the surface let's see what else we got to talk about oh there's another thing that I was doing wrong <laughs> man see this is the thing when I started this YouTube channel I was just gonna try and bring you information on how to tie flies but I've learned so much starting this YouTube myself I know you guys are learning because I get comments like, let's take a second for a minute here. If, I wish that one, that one person that's watching this, could you tell me how it looks? Does it mean this looks look terrible? Do I need to stop the stream and go back in and try it again? I mean, we can. I don't know how we're doing, so. Okay, so what this app I got on my phone, I can watch you guys' comment. So, 
Dewey Jones says in the last video it was poor visibility right now I am tying um, on sizes 20s 18s really teeny it's hard for me I'm working on cameras to make your videos better like if you look back at the old videos you want to see some unclear videos when I was learning so I'm trying to make them better and I think I had the camera a little zoomed in on that one I thought it didn't look bad I mean you can everybody leave the comments below tell me if everybody thought that it looked terrible but I had it zoomed in so that you could see all the steps on this little fly right? at some of the videos I showed you at the end how big little the fly was compared to a dime it wasn't even half the size of a dime so these flies being really small I have to zoom the camera in so you guys can see all the steps if I have it way out here it, you won't be able to see the steps or what I'm doing or so I'm just trying to make a better video quality for you excuse me excuse me coffee drink some more I guess so if they're a little clear I apologize but in a lot making trying to make everything better sometimes I will make something bad or the camera a little out of focus I'm sorry if I did that I thought I didn't see it when I edited it that it was bad but um F and H boss said congratulations congratulations on make it to a thousand subscribers and everybody good luck on the giveaway if you don't know what we're giving away I'm sure that we have one viewer right now that's the only thing is that I think a lot of people will be watching in this in the replay starting them at nine but if you're watching in the replay and you can watch it in the replay and it doesn't look like crap like I, I know some of my last live streams were really glitchy and really blah 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 blah, blah, blah and just it was weird I didn't like them I think I removed the last one if you can't even watch it if it's that bad when I get done I won't you won't be able to watch the replay so if you're here watching now if you're watching the replay I recommend you start watching all our live streams of Sunday at 9 in the morning so that you guys watch them because if they come out too bad you ain't gonna make them lose a lot of material so make sure you subscribe and put that bell notification so you get know when we're going live so you don't miss these because I might not repost them I'm not automatically posting these live streams I don't know if I'm going to at all I might you might have to be here live to catch this information um <laughs> The blue winged olive nymph for video HM Mahoney hope I say these names right comment why would anybody give this a thumbs down okay HM Mahoney if you're watching this in a replay or you're live the one watching it now live uh, I would say like I don't know if you guys could see this super chat going on over here or not hmm. it's been a long time since I did a live stream so I'm kinda like I had to update the intro video and I had to update a whole bunch of stuff and I don't know if maybe that super chats not appearing uh, I don't know doesn't look like it is so I don't know hmm. but anyway um MH Mahoney if you're watching this I have had um, my videos come up on monetization say it wasn't appropriate for all viewers I want to know what the age limit you should start letting your kids watch tying videos or fishing videos I mean we don't swear we don't at least I try not to I hope I edited all my swearing out but and he said nice pattern I will tie something like anyway I've got banned from Facebook like I've been in Facebook jail for posting my videos on groups you know <clears throat> and I've really never been sure why 
they do that to me. I, I have no idea. It's really weird. But uh, they do. They ban my, put me in Facebook jail. I can't post anything for six days. And then that's kind of a problem for me. Because I in the winter, you know, um, I gained a lot of you people probably came from Facebook. Because I gained a lot of subscribers using Facebook as a way to post my videos and get attention to my YouTube channel. And I like to share my videos to new f people to, get to come and learn from with us. And when they put me in jail and I can't post a video for six days when I'm making a video every two days, I think. This week's going to be another one of them schedules. You're going to have to make sure you pay attention because I'll be posting videos. Boom, 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 boom. We'll be ending with the blue wing dollars and starting with something new. So make sure you don't miss our videos. Um, David Valak says, congratulations on reaching a thousand subs. It's you guys, man. I'm not, I didn't go out and open a thousand YouTube channels and start subscribing. You guys got me there. So congratulate yourselves on making it to a thousand subscribers. We got some really cool stuff that we are going to use this summer that we'll have. We'll be able to go live on the creek. You'll be able to be live watching us fish on the creek. That is so cool. Because I have never seen another YouTube channel do that. So that's something I want to bring. I want to bring new things that you guys don't get to see on other YouTube channels. You know? Like, I have to do a shout out. Like, today's shout out we will do is Wooly Bugged. I like his channel, he's grown very fast. He uh, doesn't do tying videos like we do. And maybe that's why our time videos do so well and our fishing videos do so bad because he just does fishing videos and he does a good job. I love watching his videos. You know, he's teaching me creeks in our area that I have never visited that now I probably want to, which is cool because then I could bring you guys live and you could go to the creek with us. And another thing we want to do this year in our fishing videos, bring you value. I think that's one of the reasons why you, all you people like to watch the tying videos is because when you watch a tying video, you learn something. With our fishing videos, we haven't been bringing much value. As you're learning something, that will change this summer. We will bring you value, tell you what flies we have on, what depth we're fishing them at, um, everything like that. How we Flies that didn't work. Now this one, I really like this comment. Edwin Yanes, I think is this guy's name. It says, hey man, I love your videos. I watched them while at college. I'm here in southwestern PA stuck with a lot of snow in my apartment. Tying flies, prepping for spring. All your videos help me build up my box. Thank you for sharing, showing us your flies, tight lines on the river. Thank you very much, Edwin. I love that comment. I'm awesome. Tell all your college friends about us. And also... Dude, you're younger. I want to get more younger viewers to the channel. You know, I love this, man. And let me know, man. If you're, if you're in college in our area, right? Southwestern PA. Tell me where you're college, man. We'll come out and visit. We go fishing. Maybe you can teach me something. You're a college kid. What are you going to school for? Can we leave a comment down below, man? Tell me about what you're going to college for and we'll come out and visit and do some fishing. If you're just learning to tie flies and you're just learning to fish, maybe we can get you on some fish if you haven't been having very much luck or help you get on more fish on, your, on the water. I'm thinking about maybe guiding as a retirement when I'm, I'm reaching 50 this year. In 2018, in November, I will be 50. And for my 50th, I am going to do the first time ever salmon fishing. Well, steelhead. Maybe salmon. Uh, let's see. Someone asked me, have you ever had any luck with the... Uh, the black, little black stone in the winter, yes. Yeah. Um, I used to tie it with a bead head. 
Um, I might tie some up again. It's just use a real little black bead head on that. Um, this is I was doing something wrong for many years. Uh, that I want to I want to share with you guys, and you guys are gonna be like, duh. Like I said, I'm learning all the time. Like I never you you would have told me when I was a younger kid, or just three years ago out urine if I said you're crazy. You're gonna miss fish without a strike indicator. Because that's what I was taught when I was about 18, when I went fishing with a guy, and I didn't use a strike candidate, and he's like, put this on. And I went through that hole, the same fly, for about 15, 20 minutes, and didn't catch a fish, put the strike indicator on first cast, bam. I was missing strikes because I wasn't using strike indicators. So after that was fed to me, and I learned that I, I was missing so many fish with strike indicators and how to use one, the urine nipping was a little different. But it works. It's it's a thing. But what I was doing is, I, on my tandem rigs, I was putting a bead head and a bead head. Now, <laughs> I understand maybe some of you guys are doing this. Maybe some of you guys are like now already laughing, saying, and I know what the problem is here. What the problem is, is your bead head sitting in here, and then your other bead head, since it's weighted, is down here. Okay? not so good and their action in the bead head with the the bead the little weight you have on there or your split shot to get that that first fly down to the close to the bottom your bottom one will always be the one it's getting caught on the bottom always one breaking off and I was noticing I was like why is it always they're hitting the bottom fly because that was where the fish were at <clears throat> so I know you notice all the flies I'm tying in this series none of them are gonna have bead heads you want to see bead heads, go back and watch my old videos. I have ah, tons and tons of videos you can watch of weighted flies. Tie one of them up. Like, I tied, um, there is a nymph. I'm going to redo it because my, some of my old videos try to make them more clear, better videos. But there's a bead head in there. And I probably won't erase the original one because the original one is called a nymph. You must tie and I think it's a 55,000 views we'll just redo it and you tie them in like a size 18 with its teeny teeny little bead and that would be your first fly you don't want to go too big because the fish aren't seeing flies that big excuse me <clears throat> excuse me even a size 20 bead head right the smallest bead you can get would be your first fly now what I've learned that was right. What I learned is you don't want a bead head as your second fly. You want unweighted, unbead headed fly. So that will put your first fly here and your second fly could be here, maybe a little bit lower or maybe a little bit higher. That way your bottom fly is not the only one that the fish get to see. You know, I was like, man, this bottom fly, and which I was using a lot of that olive lively legs, which is a killer fly. I'm just gonna have to start using that as my first fly, unweighted one in the back. So I was like, man, this fly really works, but this other one I have on top doesn't. Well, that's because that both of them were one was here and the other one was directly below it because it was in the it was weighted. You don't want them to ride through the wa water column like that unless unless you do a bead head and your top fly may be an emerger. Then you're covering both. <coughs> excuse me. Then you're covering both of the water tables at the same time. You're covering the bottom fish, or if they're taking the merger, you got that covered in mid column. That was the only time, that if you think that's what's ha taking place, or you're seeing the fish in mid column, you could do it that way. By put, but if you're just regular nymph fishing and you want fl both flies to be at the same the fish is level then you want to make sure your back fly isn't weighted and by putting no weight on this fly I don't know if you guys um, ever seen nymphs going through the water is when you rise when you see f flies emerging make sure you're paying attention to the water 
you know, even like six or seven inches below the water, a lot of times you can look in the water and you can see the nymphs and, and they'll float upside down and upside right on their side. You know, they're not all riding through the water with their heads and their legs, legs and they're going like that. No, they're going like this. With the, with the on way to fly being your back fly, that will do that in the water currents. It'll hit water currents, especially if you cut the last fly down and it's a small fly. Now, if it's not a small fly, I wouldn't do this, but if it's a small fly, like a size 22, go down to 6 or 7X, and that'll make your uh, fly look more natural, and it'll just kind of go with the currents. And the first fly I like to use is a weighted fly. Like, did you, if you haven't watched our videos, go back and watch our videos with a holiday fly with all the purple in it. It's kind of an attractor fly, and you can put a bead head on that fly, and or just use that fly and put a little six size six lead weight on there. If you can't use weight, use tungst lead. Use tungsten. I think I'm going to switch to tungstens anyway because. I don't know if we travel a lot this year. Anyway, some places you're not allowed to use lead. So tungsten bead in front of the fly to get it weight without using a bead head. And this is another thing I've learned about bead heads. Is I went up to a creek in our area called Spring Creek. Now I know a lot of people are going to think, what the heck? I mean, you really do? But I had a lot of problems with this creek. And I noticed last year I used uh, mostly bead heads. That were catching fish and other creeks. The problem with that is the bead is not natural. They don't have a big bright head on them that's the bead. So if you're fishing native fish is another reason why I didn't put tiny bead heads this year is because I want to start fishing non bead heads where there's a lot of native fish and see if that will bring me more luck and I went and I suggest you do this. You call your local guide on that creek or spend time with a guide on that creek which we might be uh, I think we're gonna do that too was talk with guides a lot more on every creek we visit this year try and visit the fly shop on the creeks we visit this year just a lot more value on their videos but we called them and they said you might want to get rid of all uh, try fishing a whole day without any bead heads um, they look more natural and uh, I have to I was using a size 14 scud. Um, I was re told that no, you need to step it down in the winter months to size 20s and 22 scuds. <clears throat> Which we're going to do in a class soon, so look f for that coming. And I was like, oh, that's okay. So I'm going to be trying that this year. So if it's a native, a lot of native fish, you might want to just kip all them bead heads off. Put a little weight on and try ones without bead heads and see if that helps your luck out. And uh, look forward to bringing you videos in the future where we're just pounding them on some of these native waters because of the changes we made. And we'll bring that with you. Maybe it don't make any changes. Maybe I just can't fish these smoke. I don't like fishing these spring creeks. I don't. If you wanted my opinion, I'd rather fish Penn's Creek and Pine Creek and bigger waterways it's just I like it better fishing myself personally but we got to start going to these smaller f creeks and learning so we can teach you how to catch more fish when you're on these spring creeks ah, that was a lot of information about nymphing hope you're watching this in replay see I now there's a green band up in my live chat so that tells me that it looks like that might have been really funky in the beginning but now everything's straightening out okay so once since we seem to be going I never got an answer to the person that's watching us right now I do notice that we've only had one per person watching us this whole live stream <coughs> excuse me but I think if I move it to now, five o'clock we're gonna have a lot of more problems and we will bring that super chat back. What I'm going to tell you now is some information I learned <coughs> that I learned off the internet. And this is the uh, recommendation of a company that used to make knotted leaders. So what I'm going to give you is a recipe 
for a 5x leader and this is exactly I learned that I was doing a mistake on tying my leaders that I never even knew you were supposed to do so me learning like I said I'm gonna bring it to you and I want to especially you guys that are just learning unless you've been a pro for many years I've been fishing since I was 14 like I said I'm almost 50 and I didn't know that I had my leader recipe wrong but I'm gonna give you a recommendation of these guys that tie these leaders professionally how they would tie a leader so that you know exactly how your leader should be tied okay so all the point numbers are in thousands of an inch so um, give me two seconds and I'll be back and I'll show you All right, all right, I'm back. I went and got some tipping material. If you look right here in that little white tag, I don't think you can see it, but it tells you point oh. This is point oh. Man, I can't read it. But anyway, it tells you the number there right there I need to get my reading glasses on my I'm getting older my eyes are going bad so I can't read that but if my glasses I tell you but that's the number you're looking at and all your tipping material has a different number you know this one's different than the other one this is 0x and 2x but that's how I used to go I'd go o x to 2x to not knowing that it's the point O O or whatever, like point O two one. You gotta learn that. Okay, so it was a learning experience for me, and uh, I think that is why sometimes when I was tying them way wrong, that my leaders weren't acting as good because I use a lot of pre-bought leaders where um, because they cast it better for me and I think some of these leader recipes I had wrong and I know there's one section when I get to it I'll tell you I had definitely had wrong so you might want to listen to this get a piece of pen and a paper I can wait a second if you're watching this in the replay pause it So for my one viewer, you got a piece of pen and paper, you ain't talking to me. One person that might be watching just don't feel like talking. And they could be just listening to this on their phone and listening to it. So if you don't, go back and watch it in the replay. And I've seen, I think I think our stream is doing a lot better than it has been. You know, our views while we're recording ain't very good. Um, nonetheless, the repay will be better so you guys can watch us at a later date and uh, tell me what you guys think in comments and I'll go back and make sure I paid attention to the comments you guys are watching this replay as this looked a lot better we've only ever had five I think the most I've ever had was nine views people watching and that was an on scheduled post and it was really splotty it was really bad because it was at five o'clock so I'm trying to make it so the replay is better for you guys. I know there'll be less people you guys watching live, but the replay will be better. So we'll see. Tell me what you think. Would you rather what get to view it live and not mind some of the glitches we have? And watch, I could also try and go in and doctor it more if you really, really liked watching it at two. 
I'll go back in and try and figure out my settings and the OBS studios what I use to go live and I'll try and figure out how to make it so it's less blotchy you let me know in the comments below okay so we're gonna do 28 inches of 0 0.021 that's your first section and that's what you'll be tying to the line or like people do put a perfection loop in it and that's where you'll put your perfection loop at the other end you tie to now you can use a blood knot I don't use a blood knot I use a triple surgeon knot I think that's what it is but I use that, a different knot and you can go back and look at the knots I use I have an old video you're gonna have to go way back and watch my uh, how I use tippet rings I show you how to take a bought leader and use a tippet ring but I show you the knots so you might want to check that out then it's 14 inches of 0.019 12 inches of 0.017 now I want you to notice these drop this taper never goes it being 021 019 017 is only 0.12 of a change so you'll notice that the next one would be 11 inches of point oh or point oh one five now this is the part I had wrong I would taper down from 0x to uh, 1x to 2x to 3x to 4x to 5x and that's how I was doing my leaders but this here is very interesting then it's four sections of six inches each see that is something I wasn't doing and that's probably why my leaders were better when I bought them and just tied on the tip at the end which you can do that and I don't we'll see how these knots work out if I get more tangles with more knots in my leaders um, sometimes I get more tangles when I'm fishing tandem nymphs when I use a bunch of knot hand tied leaders that I don't when I do but bought leaders but then it's six inches of 0 0.013 six inches of 0 0.011 six inches of 0 0.009 six inches of 0 0.007 and then your tip it and they say 20 inches but the guy that was doing talking to me about how to do these said that he recommends a little longer tip it at 32 inches but they recommend 20 inches and this is a 5x tippet so your last part would be your 5x and you can play with this formula um, as making it um, a 4x is change your numbers back at your first one would be 0.23 or you know just make your adjustments on this recipe and I hope you wrote that down and uh, it's definitely the recipe I'm gonna use for all my leaders and uh, when I go to the fishing I'll bring this back and let and remind you about the tippet recipe and uh, I hope if you're watching this in the replay that's very valuable for me I know it was valuable for or I hope it was valuable for you I know it was valuable for me and here you can meet the kitty this is ripple she doesn't like going fishing, but she sure likes eating the fish, don't you? So I like eating trout. Bring me back. I don't eat much trout. Um, that's something else I haven't been one. I've been having forgetting to talk with you guys about. For years, I've been saying in my videos, uh, "Keep your lines wet, out of trees, and only give them fish a sore lip." I've been learning that the bait fishermen that come, if you want to make sure that them fish, you want to fish a whole like. We do this as strategist persons behind the house here. We'll go out and we don't bring you videos because you're going to watch, what, 20 videos? of what, Hey, if you want me to, I can start shoot every video trip, every fishing trip and showing it to you. Which will be bringing more fishing videos with more value when we upgrade our cameras. I mean, we want to have better footage. We want to have like a professional looking camera to shoot um, background video so that the whole video is not shot through a GoPro or a phone so our videos will get better but and you know do would you like to see us every trip or you know that's up to you guys 
you let me know in the comments below what you want to see more of more heavy trips but we spend 20 or some trips out back that we don't film fishing in these holes because they stock this creek and we just do it to go out like every other day and hook some fish maybe hook shy and that way we have holdovers and we've been doing pretty good out back in the last four years we've been here we do got some big holdovers we got some big rainbows here but then you always got the bait fisherman that gets lucky and catches them in trout season and but anyway the point is that I read a whole article how it's very dangerous to leave them stockies in the water for very long one they'll eat all the native little fingerling fish brownies that are in there and little rainbows that are in there because the rainbows are spawning in the spring when they're stocking and they also keep the the rainbows off the feeding bed they just they hit the creek with like they're used to being penned up and they kind of just swim around and be very territorial and just kind of move the natives or go into hiding so to keep the nat natives this person that I watched this article or read, I watched an article about was saying that it's better to keep a couple uh, stockies in your local water on the first day and to keep them and get them out of there so they're not eating all the native fish um, I never thought of it that way um, where there's a lot of native fish the like the, the places we like to fish the most is where it's spe special regulation it's all catch and release your chances of catching a holdovers and prettier fish and that's just like what we like to fish a lot of and I catch a slack from some of you viewers or had comments where why are you fishing in a fish pool or I don't know if they consider catch and release areas for us fly fishermen to be just dumped loaded with trout you still have hawks black bears raccoons bobcats um, all kinds of animals they're gonna eat them fish and then especially you got them in the summer when it's June and the water's really low that freaking bear can go out and just put their paw down and scoop up a fish and eat it I mean there's so much other things that they're not just packed loaded with fish and you throw your rod in and it's catch fish all day but trust me whether they're in a catch and release area or the natural water where you fish as a bait fisherman or regular fishing areas um the following year they are smart they know what nymphs look like the ones on the first day are dumb like I'm gonna bring you a fly this year that I've never brought anybody I'm gonna tie a pellet fly why just because you can you know go out and catch natives if you want or stockies if you want because that's what they're gonna respond to bait fishermen find out the color of a of a the pellets are and get salmon eggs in that color they're so stupid they just respond to being fed I used to not go out on the first day at all but hey I'm not gonna miss it pass up a day where I'm gonna catch 20 fish and in, in an hour you know because it's so easy to catch them all you have to do is tie on some kind of fancy purple fly that looks really flashy and a really nice dry fly I have I have never seen a bug on the water and I've seen these stockies hit dry flies that bright white dry flies that there's nothing on the water if there is dry flies on the water they're black they're March Brown or I mean not March Brown sorry Hendrickson some years and some years it's blue winged little blue winged olives and they're hitting a size 10 it's it's ridiculous but they that's the stockies and I never knew that by getting them out of the water you were saving your natives from them eating them because like I said they'll eat anything and I never looked at it that way so keep if you even if you don't like trout keep one or two maybe feed them to the cats I never thought of life that way and you don't have to keep them I probably won't change my patterns I'm not gonna start keeping them one thing is out back to the studio here 
and a lot of these creeks around here that they stock where you can they can fish it is a parade the first day of fishing season there must be 50 people walking back and forth in this little creek behind my house and they don't probably put a 400 fish in and it's just loaded with people you, you let them take them home you go out fishing teach them a lesson so maybe they're not biting on them and you'll maybe have a couple holders and that's what I do if you have heavy st stocked water but like I said if you want to take someone and eat them you might be saving your natives here I don't have to save our natives these people out here take there's 50 people who leave here with uh, stringers full of fish you know, it's not hard to catch. There's dumb stockies. Oh, let's see if there's anything else I wanted to talk about in this live stream. I hate that all of you guys might have missed this. Um, if you're watching the replay, you know now that if you're on the East Coast, I don't know. Um, you have to let me know in the comments. Um, this is being posted at 9 a.m. And we're never going to go over an hour with our live streams anymore. So it'll be from 9 to 10. And I... Uh, hopefully this is better re-watching. I've stayed green the whole time. I No live streams I watched before that it stayed red the whole time. It was so blotchy and... I hope I hope a bunch of you guys don't hate me for uh, doing this at this time and because you miss it um, I think if you're on the West Coast it's even earlier it's probably like what five in the morning I don't know what it is like in Europe I don't know how that works what time it is in Europe but leave comments <coughs> excuse me leave comments in the in the video just below this video and tell me how you liked it if you you know maybe if you're on the East Coast and it's not too early on the West Coast you guys can start watching this you know if you're on the East Coast you're gonna be at 9 o'clock in the morning and that's I don't know just get up get up at 9 o'clock in the morning watch us uh, you'll know next stream we do at 9 I think which I'm gonna stick to being 9 and 10 um, it works out better for me for you guys kind of in a way that now after this live stream I can go back in and work on an another video of a fly and maybe have that been posted by the end of the day doing it this way where the other way it just didn't ever work out that way I didn't have time in the morning um, by setting this time apart in the morning I'll have all afternoon to get a video up and hopefully I can and the stream seems to be a lot better. I did a stream test, um, speed test. And I did it last Sunday at 9 in the morning. By 2 o'clock, that stream, live stream downloading speed was half. And I think that's where a lot of our uh, problems came from was that, that it was cutting and my ping was way up. And it's just not good for live streams if you don't know what any of that means. It, that's probably why we've been having a thing and I'm sorry that the super chat wasn't up here so you guys can see everybody's comments even though we only had one view watching person watching and they left no comments so you're not really missing anything um, the one person watching unless you wanted to do um, donate money to the channel and super chat um, I'm sorry if you did but so I definitely think we'll switch to 9 o'clock to try to uh, make the next one. Uh, I think that's it. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not it. I better get this in quick. I want, I'm very excited to show you this. And I got a little video set up that I'll play for you here. But this. This is a book that I got in the mail that I recommend highly recommend you pick up one all money goes to charity that's one reason why I recommend this book and 
see if you can see that. See that? That's us, Donald Russell. On that fly that I've got so many responses to. A lot of hate mail on this fly. Right here. That's mine. It was the streamer that you must tie. Which I will redo. Because I went back and looked at the video. And it was kind of little... There's some little flaws in my video, and it wasn't the clearest video, but we'll redo it, and we'll show you more how to tie it better. The comments said that they couldn't tell how to wrap the the stuff for it. We'll redo that video, and then uh, we post it, so you can watch it, but that fly made it in, and it is a killer fly. So now, I'm going to show you a little video I made with some guest appearances from some very special people to me. Let's check this out. Hey, welcome to a little live clip, all you long riders. I wanted really excited to show you this. It came in the mail a couple days ago. And if you're interested in this, there's a link below where you can find us. Check this out. This is really cool. This came in the mail. This is America's favorite flies. Look at how thick this book is. Here, I'll show you. Some pictures in here. We have these uh, 200 and some 223 tires. Okay, and there's a picture of all the flies. And uh, here I want to show you this one. This one in particular. See what the name says? Yeah, that's me. I'm in the book. <coughs> See the white streamer that I keep telling you. It's so amazing. Do you like 55 views, 55,000 views on? It's in a book. Let me tell you, when I say that fly works, and uh, there's another section in here. But then you go to this, and then it shows you like, each tire, their story, pictures. And what this is, it's got a hold of us. 223 of us and ask us they didn't ask us what's the most deadliest fly because you know we've got a bunch of Frenchies and woolly buggers what they asked us was what is our favorite fly and let me tell you what there is a whole bunch of flies in this book to tell you the story behind it and it's an amazing book Now, I'm going to show you something here. There's two people that I got to thank for this. The first one being, well, let me show you right now. You and me were meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free. Yep, that was a picture of my dad in the first set of pictures. And he was the one that took me fishing when I was a kid, like eight. Also drove me every Wednesday to our courthouse in our town so I could take free tying classes at the age of 13. <coughs> For many years, every Wednesday he'd drive me. So I went and asked Channel, I wouldn't be a fly fisherman if it wasn't for him. And then the last pictures I added in there was my mom. We all love our moms. And the last person I have to thank is God himself. And these people are the people that made it possible for this channel to be this, this amazing, amazing book. That I know you all are going to go check out. Right at the end of this live stream by clicking the link below. And I know they're a little pricey, I might have to say, but trust me when I say that this book is well worth it. I mean, look at this. This is huge. You know, if I open it up, I can cover up the whole screen. There's so much good pictures. There's, there's artwork, there's pictures, there's stories. I will spend the next, I don't know how many years reading all these stories about all these flies. There's some funny ones, there's some good ones, 
There's ones that led to, there's flies in here that led to all kinds of things, from marriage to, you, you, you got to get this book and check it out. And one thing that's really cool about this book, every single dime made from this book goes to charities. So check the website out at the end of this stream and get yourself one of these awesome books. Hey, welcome back, Long Rodders. That book is amazing. I'm so impressed with it. When they asked me, I honestly thought that when Dave got a hold of me about adding one of our flies to the book, I, I thought it was a joke. I thought somebody was just trying to get some free flies out of a whole bunch of tires. I didn't know what was going on. And no, it's no joke. Here it is. We're in it. You must get it. This book, you will be so amazed at the... I mean, let's let me show you. Let me do, do, here, do here. I mean, not only do you have flies on the really cool stories that go with them, but you have amazing artwork by artists and stuff. It's just an amazing book. I just can't. I'm just so impressed with the, how they did this book. So make sure you pick your copy up. And when you're out winter fishing, go smaller. If you're not having any luck, and don't forget, you can always throw on a nice size 12 uh, black or yellow stone because they're in the water, because their lifespan's longer. So if you're at nymphing and you're not having any luck with small ones, try throwing on a stone once in a while and running that through the water. And sometimes them trout are, uh, just like to see that bigger fly so they don't have to work much for the flies um, another thing that I didn't cover when we were talking about midges is make sure you have Griffiths gnats this time of year a Griffiths gnat represents a cluster of them on the in the water a lot of times your midges will get together in a cluster I've seen clusters that are huge six inches around and all of a sudden it'll be floating down the creek and one of them little clusters will break off and start floating with about 10 or 12 flies in a little cluster and the fish will just the whole cluster will get 12 of them at one time I've seen it happen a lot and that's what the Griffith snap represents is that cluster and tie them in size 18s 20s and heck even 16 and keep them in your box it's a really good go-to pattern if you can't see what if you tie if you think they're dry, uh, feeding on midges and your midge dry fly patterns aren't working and maybe they're taking clusters tie on that uh, Griffiths gnat it's the best one of the best go-to flies dry flies of the winter and it also works in the summer when you don't know what they're eating sometimes they hatch midges are around all year long and don't miss up any come up our time videos I hope this is in the replay like I said make sure you leave comments if you hated that I did it at 9 in the morning or if you're okay with it just that now you know they're at 9 o'clock in the morning and uh, unless I have a really bunch of big-time hate mail calling on uh, that no I just stinks and I can get it worked out in my uh, live streaming app uh, OBS to make it a little bit better at 2 o'clock uh, I'd rather do it nine myself because it's just like I said it'll make me a chance that after this I go and I'll go meet Trace you know everybody knows you should know who Trace if you don't know who Tracy is that's my girlfriend she can catch her in videos too she, she die hard loves the fish I introduced her two years ago first year that I had her out in the water I taught, taught her to rule cast and just with rule casting and not even a year on the water she was landed 20 inch browns because that's how good of an instructor I am. And let me know if you want us to go out in the water with you, if, you know. And uh, leave us an email. I'd like to have your email anyway. That lets me know if you take go to the email bottom of this video. Go to that email. Send me an email with your email address. I get. I'll send you uh, notifications. Like today, you would have known that we switched it to nine o'clock because I would have sent you an email yesterday. You know, giving you reminders. I can send you reminders. I can send you discounts. So, make sure you leave your email. 
And then I thank you all for watching. You keep your lines wet, out of the trees, and only give them fish a sore lip unless you're saving your natives. Thank you for watching you all, long riders. Have a good day.